Hello everybody and welcome to this Xbox Life episode 277 Targeting Cheaters. I am one of your hosts, Mark, aka Wingman709, and with me as always is my good buddy Rob. Hey, what's up everybody? Also known as Presar on this X well, not this Xbox Live, but uh on Xbox Live. <laughs> well the same. It's just... You're you're Presar on this Xbox Life as well. Yes, yes, yes. You are just Presar. You... Yes, it is I. <laughs> so, first yeah, the, off, the, I'll go ahead, I was about Rob. to say, the, the, the guy with no numbers, no letters, no weird characters or anything in his name, just Presar. <laughs> you don't see that very much, do you? Not anymore. Everybody's got yeah. like some kind of weird uh, characters or something, or numbers, or all the XX or ZZs in front of their name. That shows you the popularity of Xbox Live. <laughs> it does. So, how Which about is a good it? thing. How about Hopefully that? Hopefully our audio is a little bit better this week. And uh, I have, I apologize. I think the issue was I was told, we were told the week before that I was real quiet. So we tried to raise my volume and it, it made things a lot worse. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you guys can hear both of us equally of the same volume today. Absolutely, and it's not blasting anybody's ears. Nobody's falling out of their chairs when they hear Mark talk. So, well, if if they do fall out of their chair, it's only because you say you say something very profound. Exactly. Well, not just because their uh, <laughs> eardrums are bleeding. Well, Jesus walks a lot. Is in the in the live chat room watching us live, and he just confirmed that our audio is good. We did a quick test beforehand, but. Uh, uh, good, so we, we should be back to normal levels, and we apologize for that. Sweet! So, moving on, please do not forget to support us by doing all your shopping at Amazon.com. You can go to thisxboxlife.com forward slash Amazon, and that is how you get to support us um, and help us pay for the cost of doing the show. So, uh, we really appreciate everybody doing that. Don't forget, just because Christmas is gone, don't forget, you can still shop there year-round. So, thank you very Absolutely. much. So, all right, Rob, what did you play this week? So, this week I played, uh, I believe, only one game, and that was Lara Croft Guardian of Light, which is the current freebie game from uh, Games with Gold on uh, Xbox Live. And uh, you played this one as well, didn't you? I did play this. And uh, I remember when this one came out, uh, it was one of the summer of arcade games, right? Wasn't it? I'm pretty sure it was. I think it was. Yeah. And I, I passed on it back then. I, I, now, I'm a big fan of uh, Lara Croft games, uh, Tomb Raiders and, and all those. But this one was just different because it was, uh, what do they call those, three-quarter view? Is that right? I don't it's know. not a platformer. It's one of those. Down. Yeah, like. <sighs> You see it from an angle and so yeah. forth. So I, I kind of passed on it. But uh, I, I was really pleasantly surprised. Uh, I the, the first level that I played of this game, I was kind of like, yeah, this is okay. It's got some weird camera angle issues. Um, it, it's, it's, it's not bad. And then the second level, I'm like, you know, I'm really, this is really growing on me. I'm really starting to like this thing. And it continued, and I can honestly say that I'm really enjoying this game. It's a lot of fun. It's definitely uh, a great value. <laughs> you get a lot for nothing, or uh, or whatever your uh, Xbox Live is uh, costing you. But it, it's a it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's I think it's um, easy enough where you can probably uh, score all the gamer score on this game. It's got some weird challenges. Uh, and so forth on each level and uh, I definitely recommend that everybody download it and give it a shot if you can't find time to play just download it anyway because it's a decent enough game that uh, I can definitely recommend it and uh, that's about it for me how about you Mark I uh, also played the Lara Croft game I wasn't as impressed I, but then again you know I, I think Rob I'm a little worried I think I'm in a really weird place with gaming right now um, how so what do you mean i'm bored with everything yeah and i know what you mean it's like i don't even have a desire to i've got i have assassin's creed 4 sitting here and i don't i played a little bit but i don't even have the desire to 
put it in anymore. Uh, I couldn't get in a Need for Speed uh, recently. I I sit down and I'm like, there's really nothing I want to play. And I just sit and watch. Uh, I've been watching a lot of TV lately um, with the Amazon Instant Streaming. I've been watching yep. some really good shows. I, that's like I, the desire to play games is like gone. And this was this happened right before this was going on with me before the Xbox One came out. Remember, and I, I actually mentioned to you that maybe I shouldn't get the X One because you know I'm kind of wondering if I've just gotten tired. That's crazy gaming. talk. Um, and and I got you know sucked into Dead Rising three and and um, you know Max and stuff. But you know I I tried to play some stuff recently and I'm just like I don't know I'm just bored so I'm not sure what's going on I don't know if it's just I need something new but uh, I didn't care for Laura, the, the Lara Croft I, I would like to maybe try it co-op um, maybe that'll make a difference but it, it just really didn't do it for me um, I played a little Max Curse of Brotherhood um, I, I actually went after an achievement and I got one more uh, are you trying to get those uh, those last five or whatever I, they're I got four left to get. Okay. And they're all the complete the levels without dying, and then beat the last guy. Or yeah, and then I don't maybe there's five because then it's like you got to keep your brother alive. And I read there's a way to do that. You can actually do it really easily. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's like, well, it's the point if you're basically cheating the system. So, but um, I I don't know if I'm gonna do those or not. I don't know. We'll see. If I get really bored, I might try it. Um, I did play some Call of Duty Ghost today. Um, I popped it in, and I actually was playing with the squad mode, and I actually had a lot of fun. I was basically playing against my squad that I'm working on building out, uh, taking on AI and uh, in different game modes, and I actually really enjoyed that. Um, and, and so I was having a lot of fun. I actually played quite a bit of that today. Um, I played XCOM Enemy Within. And uh, also, I did complete Dead Rising 3. I got every achievement in that game for the first 1,000. Oh, wow. So um, I'm waiting for the DLC to hit, which should be really soon. Actually, I think it, it might be this coming week. I can't. I think you're right. I got I to gotta look that up. So if it is, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'll have for next week. But... Um, I, I really, yeah, so I, fi I got all that. I had to, I've got like 340, I think I got like 342,000 total kills. Oh, wow. <laughs> in that game, yeah. That's a lot that's of That's a zombies. couple two tree, yeah. That's what you're going to, if you want to get the 1K, you're going to, that's what you're going to have to do. So uh, just be prepared to do some grinding um, with some vehicles and running over a lot of zombies so um, but it was a lot of fun and I'm really excited for the DLC to come out uh, but that's about what I that's about all that I played this week so um, I guess we can just go ahead and move on you, you know I, I just before we go on I, I do kind of want to make a comment about you, what you were saying about almost being kind of burned out on some of the games and I, I definitely know what you mean. I, I really think it's something that just comes and goes. It's just like waves, kind of. When there isn't anything new, fresh, and exciting out, you, you kind of get stuck playing old stuff, and it might be mostly okay. Or worse yet, you play it just because. You know, you play this game just because you have it, or it was free, or you're you're just trying to find a reason to play. Because, for, for example, the other day. I was thinking about playing Rise because I haven't played it in weeks, and it's a good game. I just couldn't get myself to play it. It just it it was literally like, yeah, you know, maybe I'll go watch some TV or something instead. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It it just you know versus let's say when Max came out, and uh, maybe this isn't the best analogy, but when Max came out you were kind of like looking forward to playing it like well i'm gonna have an hour free where you know i can just go in and i can play max or whatever game uh for a while versus mm, let me play it just because i have it you, do you know what i mean yeah there, there's like a different compulsion to play the game sometimes and I, I really think that if 
you play a whole lot. Granted, if it's something like the uh, Dead Rising Three, which is a fantastic game, but if you play it a lot, you will get burned out. It, it it's like eating a Taco Bell every day. <laughs> but I did not you, get burned out on Dead Rising Three. I love it. I in fact, yeah, that's like but the it, one game I almost played it today, and I'm like, well, I've beat the game like three times. I've got every achievement. Right? I've yeah. I've I've there's I've done all the trials. It's like there's nothing really for me left to do, but I still want to get in and like just slay zombies. I mean, it's like well, that's maybe the only you... one that I really have that I'm like, okay, this one I can play and I know I'll have fun with. The others are just like, eh, I don't really feel well, like playing them. Well, you know, maybe you can look at it from a different perspective. Okay, so it, it's obvious that Dead Rising Three. Uh, captured your attention <laughs> in one way or another, yeah. and you love that game. Yeah. And maybe the problem is is that the other games aren't Dead Rising three. Well, I think it's the Dead Rising was actually I've tried the first two and I kind of liked them, but they had the timing issue that mm -hmm. I kept and I just it's like I wanted to be able to explore and play it play at my own pace, and then this third one lets you do that. I think I would have loved the first two had they let me do that. Um, but it it's different. It's not another COD or a Battlefield. It's not another Forza or you know Need for Speed. I mean, it's like I think I'm tired of the racing games. I'm tired of the shooters. I actually think I'm getting tired of shooters. Yeah. You know, um, that's why I think it's a good for me to have the. I mean, I loved Max. I'm not a platformer. I, I don't play yep. platforming games. Love because it was different. It was you different. Know, Dead Rising is... was different. Rise was different. You know, um, I enjoyed Rise. Um, so I, I think that's really maybe, you know, what I need is I just need new stuff. I, I You know, maybe Plants vs. Zombies is not, Garden Warfare is not going to be that great because it's just a shooter game. You know, I don't know how that's going to be. I was looking for the, forward to that one. Um, you know, so I don't know. It'll be, we'll see what happens. Um and how things progress the rest of the year, but I don't know. I've really slowed down. Yeah. Um, I, really, the only one I really enjoy right now is uh, my Xbox One is Dead Rising, and then on my 360, I'm loving XCOM. And that's a, and XCOM is a different, you know, it's a slower paced, you know, uh, uh, turn based game, which you don't have these. This is like, that's the only way to play a turn based game is to play XCOM. So yeah. I, I wish they made more of those because those are a lot of fun. So I just think that's what it is. I just need something new. Yeah. Because you're uh, you're tired of the same old. Do you you wanna you wanna experience new stuff? Yeah. Well, I can also if you like Max and you want something new, you might w still want to check out the um, what was it called Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons. You know, I've um, I've looked at that. You've talked about it so many times. I actually looked at it. But I think that trying to control characters with a di each stick, I, I think that would just, I don't think I could wrap my head around that. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know. I've looked at it, but it's just... It's actually okay. It, it's not bad. Because all you do is you got your thumbsticks, you move them around, and uh, use the triggers. I believe that's, that's all that you had in there to control them. Just thumbsticks and, and triggers. So the triggers will be whatever action they're looking to do, like to grab onto uh, a winch or to climb or, or whatever. But there are times, definitely, when I used to when I would play it, where I had them switched. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where yeah. the the guy that I thought was on the right was on the left, and then all of a sudden they're <laughs> they're going opposite directions. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, I can see okay. myself doing that all the time. <laughs> So what I eventually started doing is I tried to keep uh, the same brother on the same side yeah. as much as I could. But uh, all in all, it, it was very much kind of like a, a Max where you have puzzles. Like you have to have the one brother over here on the winch and then you had to have the other one over here. Like do you remember that Max level where you had Felix mm -hmm. and Felix was in that ball? or in that cage, whatever you want to call it. 
So then you had Felix underneath on another platform, and you were up above flipping switches. Then he would go, he would open something that allowed you through. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what Brothers Tale of Two Sons is like. That uh, very much exemplifies the game. But yeah, if you get a chance, definitely check it out. All right, well, we'll see. I, I think you'd like it. But um, just to go, the Dead Rising 3 DLC does come out this Tuesday. On the twenty mm-hmm. first, so this will be the first of their four, and it's called Operation Broken Eagle. So I will be all over that, and um, so and it looks like I'll be playing some too because uh, eventually Loki was saying he's uh, he's he's stuck at a part there, so I'm gonna help him out because I love that game. <laughs> mm-hmm. So all right, so let's move on. Hey, let's get into- hey, one one more one more thing. No, <laughs> just one more, <laughs> just one more. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had mentioned on the Facebook group that uh, Amazon had the Polk Audio Melee headset uh, that was on sale for a really fantastic price. I think it was somewhere like 40% off or, or some, something like that. So I went ahead and I got it. Uh, before that, I had the Turtle Beach XP500 wireless headset. And it's one that I had had for some time, and it was... Uh, a fantastic headset initially. Uh, I got it refurbished on one of those Woot sales, so I, I got it for a really good price. And I was really excited to have a wireless headset finally. Uh, however, I found that the wireless headset uh, definitely had its troubles uh, twofold. Well, first of all, uh, it supported Bluetooth uh, for connectivity to a PC phone or whatever. Uh, and it was also wireless, but it, I guess it was on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, uh, which is very noisy. So after a certain amount of time, I, I don't know if it was just there all the time that I had it, but I never noticed it uh, or, or whatnot, but I had so much static on there. It was horrible. Uh, when you had some, let's say, soft uh, Uh, gameplay noises or whatever it wasn't too bad but as soon as anything got really loud like for example in ghosts uh, if something was like crashing or uh, you had something really loud whatever it is you'd hear all the static it it was really noticeable and it kind of detracted from the gameplay so I had this like that for a while, and when the Polk headset came out on, on sale, I figured, why the heck not? Now, this is not a wireless headset. I, I think I'm kind of done with wireless headsets for a while uh, after that uh, Turtle Beach experience. Uh, granted, I do know that they have some new models that are supposedly better, but I'm kind of turned off on those right now. But uh, I got the Melee uh, headset. Uh, and I was finally able to spend a decent amount of time with it uh, this time around with uh, Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light. And I just wanted to mention uh, my experiences with it. Overall, it's a pretty nice little headset. Now, it is wired. And it has an interesting hookup. I've never had another headset like this. I don't know if there's other ones that do this. I imagine they probably do. It's got this little barrel. Um, uh Piece, which I guess is the actual audio electronics for it and it's got a USB that plugs into the USB port of the Xbox so that's kind of like how it gets its sound and its power and then you have this really long cable that plugs into that barrel and that goes into the, your controller so on the top of the controller and then from there you have another piece that goes into the bottom of the controller where the chat stuff is you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. You know yeah. how the Xbox 360 has the top connector and the bottom connector? Yep. So it's got this thing, and it looks kind of like an inverted Y or maybe like a peace symbol or I don't know, whatever you, want, whatever you want to call it. And there's two little knobs on there. One knob is for chat. One knob is for the head, headphone audio. And then from there, the wire goes up into the headset. And a, another thing I want to mention about the headset that is really cool is that it doesn't have a boom uh, microphone like I'm pointing to right. here on my headset for those of you that uh, uh, are watching the video uh, just a typical boom it does not have that it's actually retractable so it's this little thing you just pop on the earpiece and then it like drops down and it doesn't come out across and it picks up uh, a voice that way and then you can retract it when you're not using it so they look totally like an audio uh, headset but 
uh, the sound on them is fantastic. It's got awesome bass. It's uh, got the sound quality that you kind of expect from Polk. I, I've uh, I've got some Polk speakers in my car, which are just amazing, and uh, these definitely do not disappoint. But the one thing that I'm finding that I really like a whole lot is that that little knob thing that is at the bottom of the controller. At first, I thought it would be kind of in the way, but it's very un unobtrusive. But the fantastic thing of it is those two knobs. When you want to adjust your volume at all, whether it's the, the chat or, or the regular gaming sound, uh, all you do is your, your hands are right there because they're on the controller. You just just let go of the controller and just give it a little twist and you're done. Because uh, my previous headset, you had to like, fumble with buttons on the, hmm. on the headphones, etc. And, and I, I really, really... Uh, just like how they're laid out the sound on them is fantastic and they're coming out with a uh, a connector for the xbox one so you can use these uh, headphones with either system uh, that's something that they're going to be mailing people once you register your s system on their site and uh, then they'll mail it to you when it comes out so uh, you know if you're ever looking for a uh, a decent pair of headphones for your Xbox and eventually uh, Xbox One in addition to the 360. Um, definitely consider these. Uh, I give these guys the double thumbs up. Excellent quality. They sound great. Uh, they don't have the static that I had with the Turtle Beaches. Hopefully nobody else has that static as well. And um, yeah, I just wanted to give a little update as to my experiences with it. And uh, that's it, my friend. We we can now proceed now. We no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now that's good information to hear, and I think that having the controls there for the volume and the individual volumes is a good idea. I thought that, oh, that yeah. was kind of cool. So and that they're knobs. I mean, they're they're little dials, as yeah. opposed to having to hit buttons for up and down. It's just so quick and so easy. I I wouldn't think that it would be as nice as it is or as, as useful as it is, but it's just so fast. Because if, if you can't hear something in a game, the last thing you really want to do is just sit there like fumbling with buttons. Like I know in my Turtle Beach, I'd kind of have to, you know, well, actually those had a, a knob as well. And I think it on the back. But, you know, the last thing you want to do is hit plus and minus buttons or, or something in order to get the t uh, sound dialed in just right. Here, you can literally adjust it in like, half a second and you're done you know you won't get wiped out or whatnot if you're in some extreme action <laughs> so Alrighty. all right my friend well, let's move into our topics and uh let's... i got a video to accompany this one but go ahead you can do the talking my friend all right and i shall okay call of duty ghosts uh has some dlc called onslaught uh, basically, it's going to be the first downloadable contact pack, downloadable content uh, for Call of Duty Ghosts, where uh, you're going to have uh, uh, four small to medium multiplayer maps uh, titled Fog, Bayview, Containment, and Ignition, uh, a reimagining of the classic map Scrapyard from uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. That's kind of going in uh, the Wayback Machine over there. How long ago did that come out? Was that like in 09? 10? Um, it was a couple years back. A couple years back. I mean, we had, what, yeah. Black Ops 2 last year, then Modern Warfare 3 before that, Black Ops before that, so Modern Warfare 2 before that. <laughs> okay. All right, and then... Uh, uh, players also get the or access to the Maverick, which is an all-new dual-purpose assault rifle and sniper rifle. So for all of your assaulting and sniping needs. <laughs> Although I don't know if that's proper, assaulting needs. Anyway, uh, the Extinction uh, storyline continues with Episode 1, Nightfall, with the first installment in a four-part episodic narrative where you can explore a remote facility in the Alaskan wilderness and learn more about the orig origins of the alien threat. Uh, Onslaught uh, arrives on Xbox Live on January 28th. 
uh, which is uh, a little bit over a week away, which I believe is the same day as uh, Tomb Raider uh, coming out. And um, yeah, that's it. Call of Duty Ghosts DLC. Now, did is that the one? But did they talk about Michael Myers? Because no. this DLC also includes. Um, it's going to bring a, a, the new weapon and a Halloween Michael Myers to the game as well. Seriously? Yes. No oh boy. <laughs> so they said, here, let me read another one here. Um, I don't know if it's only on this map, but they say the one story I'm reading is that a map called Fog is set alongside the lake and designed as a homage to homage to classic horror films filled with an eerie campsite, flickering TVs, and more. So by completing... So I think this is the only map you can do this on, but by completing a certain field order, players can become Michael Myers, the masked slasher from the Halloween series of horror films. Other mm. players will learn of the transformation when the halloween theme music begins to play. And you actually oh end up with his mask, and I guess you end up with his axe, because they, they show the bloody axe in the video. So, that... I think it's kind of an interesting twist as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I think we'll it's go with that. Cool. Yeah. So, and and I'm looking forward to. I still need if anybody's out there and wants to, uh, either on 360 or Xbox One, I'd like to get a group of players together to try to get through the extinction mode. I, I've yet to been able to um, get through that. It is so hard. Uh, my character's pretty well leveled up, so I need... If anybody else is sitting up there and we need to get a group... Uh, I think you need to be around in level 30s. You see, I think the, basically they were saying you need a, everybody to be around level 30. So if anybody is uh, looking for some extinction players to try to beat that, hit me up. I'd be more than happy to get in, in with some of that. So. All okay. Right. So, cool. All right, so the next one, we got some more DLC announcements. And this is for Dead or Alive 5 Ultimates getting a new patch and a new character. Uh, they're going to, this is coming out the first half of 2014. And they, I guess there was recently. Which is uh, now? Well, first half. That takes you all the way into June. Yeah, but so, that's now. So okay. sometime now. So, they, anyways, Team Ninja lead Yasuki Hayashi announced that version update 1.04 will be hitting Japanese arcades in January, followed by Xbox 360 and PS3 in early February. There have been no patch notes, uh, have been not yet issued, but they said to expect bug fixes, balance changes, and feature enhancements, as well as new costumes for the entire cast. Um, um, and then also there was talk of I thought, oh yeah, here it goes I'm trying to find where it was the console patch will come as great news uh, to some fans because Marie Rose which is a character currently exclusive to the Japanese arcade version is also coming to the 360 and PS3 as well um, So, but they said that will be early spring release window for that so they're going to add another character to the game as well. So look for these updates coming here in the early part of the year for Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate if you are playing that. Okay. That's a fun game. Oh, yeah. Very violent and fun. So moving on, uh, let's take a trip to China with this next story. Uh, basically, one week after China lifted... a. Uh, uh, slightly lifted this ban on foreign-made uh, video game consoles. The Chinese government is looking to draft some new rules uh, for regulation, because I guess you can't regulate enough in, out there. Uh, among the principles that uh, govern the distribution and uh, of game consoles under among the principles that govern the distribution of game consoles under the rules of the free trade zone, head of China's ministry, ministry of culture, uh, Kai Wu, maybe? Uh, let's go with that. Uh, said, things that are hostile to China or not in conformity 
with the outlook of China's government won't be allowed. <laughs> okay. Battlefield oh. fork. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think you already banned that one. Yep. They say, uh, we want to open the window a crack. I, I, I love this analogy here. A crack to get some fresh air, but we still need to sc the screen to block the flies and mosquitoes. Yeah. So Battlefield is a fly or a mosquito or yeah. mosquito both or whatever uh, whether that indicates further regulation in China or distribution of games based on their content is unknown so uh, yeah they're uh, they're a big downer on uh, on gaming I guess although they've got all these games out there that are just kind of crazy aren't don't they because some of those people out there really go to town playing games and you hear stories of them kind of falling over and in the internet cafes and so forth. Not so much on the consoles, but on the PC. A little bit. Yeah. They, they got yeah. There's a lot of um, pretty dedicated gamers over there. <laughs> oh yeah. So. They usually seem to play those MMOs though. Yeah. But right. yeah, so. Who knows if this will really affect things? I I, I really wonder what the number, the sales numbers are it, in China I think it's for consoles. Though, because now that if the doors are going to open up, that means Sony and Microsoft. Think of how many people there are in China. That that's a huge market. That bam, we can you can now but sell consoles there. Can they afford it though? I mean, I, I don't know what. I don't know how much they make. You know, could a console be like three years' salary or something if if they don't make a whole lot? I, I don't know. Because, of course, you'll have the people that are, are very well-to-do, especially if they're in power, but your average Chinese person could potentially be, you know, kind of poor. It's hard to say. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see what happens. Absolutely. So. And then over there also you have all that piracy as well. Well, maybe this will help. I mean, if they're pirating it already, I mean, at least if they're opening the doors to be able to get the consoles, you know, and maybe sell some stuff, it, it could still be good for, for the two console companies. So, yep. and Nintendo as well. Yeah, boy. Well. So, it just, it opens up the doors for them to sell hardware and software to a massive amount of people. Absolutely. So, Alright. We'll okay. What happens. That's right. So, if we all thought the Xbox One was the last console that Microsoft was going to make, uh, Phil Spencer says that's not uh, that's not the case. Um, he said, I guess he took to his Twitter recently and basically was was talking about the idea. But um, you know, with the idea that of cloud gaming, you know, a lot of people thought Sony and Microsoft uh, would this that their PlayStation 4s and Xbox One would be the last. Uh, consoles that we're going to see, but uh, you know, uh, Phil Spencer is saying that that's not necessarily going to be the case. Um, Microsoft has no plans to jump ship just yet, um, but it's unlikely the company's thinking about any future consoles right now. I mean, obviously they just put it out, so you know, I'm sure in the next five years we'll 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 see. They'll they'll probably start talks in the next five years. Uh, you know if they're going to start doing something because it does take many years to plan but uh, they're saying don't don't count it out as this being the end of the consoles so they, they could still be more in the future yep interesting yes 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 all right uh, Grand Theft Auto uh, a, a slightly just slightly popular game uh, this game uh, came out a couple months back I guess and there's been some controversy uh, in a couple avenues, uh, particularly uh, you know, people cheating. Uh, the developer has released a patch to kind of take care of uh, some of those things. They released actually a couple of updates. And they completed an update. This would have been on a Thursday of, uh, of last week. Uh, where they had some scheduled maintenance and they applied an update uh, that is going to be removing counterfeit in-game currency that has uh, spread 
throughout the uh, GTA verse uh, over the past couple of weeks. And they're going to be taking corrective measures to punish all of those people who are actively engaged in cheating and, and doing all sorts of other stuff. Uh, Rockstar says that uh, the players who did not actively exploit the game's uh, progression system will not be targeted um, during uh, this time uh, <laughs> until they do target you. Because <laughs> uh, whenever companies do stuff like this, you always hear certain innocent folks just get wiped, don't you? Yeah. I think some people kind of just get nailed. Some do. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I guess it depends on how they do it. I, I, I would expect here they're showing um, if you've done the counterfeit, they're going to know if you've counterfeited the money or used the exploits and the cheats or stuff. So, I mean, it's going to be, I think, kind of obvious. I mean, I haven't even logged yeah. in, and I never even got my half a million dollars that they were going to give me for being, like, one of the first people on. I haven't even been on since they gave that half a million dollars. So they mm -hmm. can't say I was cheating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but um, I don't know. I, I'm sure that they're going to – I'm sure they got some pretty good requirements, and it's probably pretty easy to tell who's doing what. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they say uh, counterfeit uh, money received from others will be removed from the player's accounts, and all previously purchased items will remain available for use. Uh, players who purposely cheated the system, however, are subject to punitive actions, uh, ranging from assignments to cheater-specific player pools to full bans from GTA Online. I guess uh, that goes for the the biggest offenders. Do you, At least do you think. Do you find it odd that they're they're going after cheaters? in a game that's all about crime. <laughs> yeah, crime and theft. Like, that's, you know, that's a very good point. <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> the game is about <laughs> killing and stealing and <laughs> drugs and guns and... I mean, oh, we're going to ban you for cheating. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I get what they're doing. It just seems kind of humorous to me. <laughs> that's a very good point, my friend. So. Touché. Touche. Uh, be a good gamer. Don't don't cheat in your violent crime riddle yeah. video game. <laughs> it's so. like be a good player and go carjack that car. <laughs> don't uh, <laughs> don't so. try to don't steal game money um, while you're trying to extort money. No, but I I know what they're doing and they need to do it. They do need to police yeah. the environment because. They are building this online game, which is probably going to thrive for a long time. And they're going to be able to add content to it. And to keep players there and engaged, they need to keep it, you know, clean and legit. And, you know, the game running as it's meant to be, you know. So, otherwise it's not going to be any fun for people. So, yep, yep, yep. Good, good on them. Glad to see them uh, taking that on. That's right. All right. So for our next little story, I'm going to... I think I'm actually going to play audio on this, so I'm going to mute for a minute. Essentially, it's a, it's a commercial that Xbox One is... Uh, it's a TV ad, but it's, uh, it's... And I thought it was interesting because they said... Um, it's like said it best, but it's like all the reviews and um, comments that have been made by uh, the press and the media and stuff. So... You know, being that the, the console's been out for, what, two months now? We're right about eight weeks, I think. So um, it's kind of nice. It's getting some really good press. So just check out the video. Let me turn the uh, audio on here for everybody. This is an invitation to what Fortune called the console of the future. Xbox answer. Did you say that? To what Entertainment Weekly described as one box to rule the living room. Go to Star Trek Into Darkness. To what the New York Daily News hailed as the most ambitious gaming machine yet. Go to Titanfall. But one fan said it best. The Xbox One is the greatest thing that's ever happened to mankind. The all-in-one Xbox One. That's right. The greatest thing to ever happen to mankind. So, um, I just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, I'm glad to see that the Xbox One is getting uh, really good press. Um... And uh, 
you know, it is cool. I, I'm looking forward to, to their first update. That's what I want more than anything right now. Um, give me the update. Let me see what you do to fix the party system yeah. and the uh, online multiplayer uh, connecting but uh, and some other little things. But it, 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 I love the console. I, you know, I've had it now for eight weeks or so, and I really yeah. do love it. And I think it is it is a really cool device. And uh, I do like having it on all the time and being able to do different things with it, um, controlling it with my voice and stuff and, you know, making everything come on and off. You know, it's just, uh, it's nice. It, it still has Oh, gotten, absolutely. Uh, it's it's a it's like a gimmick that hasn't gone away, you know. Like with the Connect was originally cool you know, at first, and then it's like, okay, well, this is stupid. So, you know, I'm surprised they didn't use our quote for uh, Xbox One on that commercial. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, and TXL says, eh. It's nice. <laughs> eh. <laughs> so it's like a warm fuzzy. <laughs> All right, but anyways, moving on. Oh, uh, absolutely, you just made me kind of think about it a little bit in terms of how long we've had this thing. It really kind of shocks me to think that here we are already, almost two months after launch, because we were talking about the thing for well, almost like years. <laughs> it's just you know, it's coming next year. It's coming in November, which is nine months away, and then it's here we are afterwards. Yeah, It's awesome. <laughs> Waiting for more. Yeah, that's right. All that untapped potential. So, so alright. So moving let's on. Let's, move, let's jump back to the 360 now. <laughs> oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> now, uh, one game that we've talked at least I've talked a bunch past couple episodes, is The Wolf Among Us. This is a, a Telltale game uh, from Telltale Studios, makers of The Walking Dead uh, game as well. And uh, this is a, a, a separate storyline that uh, came out, I guess, early fall, late summer last year. At least it was a couple months ago. With episode one, uh, they finally announced that episode two of The Wolf Among Us will be out in the first week of February. So we're looking at about two weeks away. I'm really excited about this. Uh, Mark uh, sent this over to me the other day. And when I read it, I was like, yeah, all right. Because I've really been wondering what's going on with this thing. Because it seems like it's just taken forever to come out with the second one. Because I played this probably in the first week. Uh, that it got released, at least episode one got released. So I'm really stoked for this thing. Uh, you're looking at uh, what five bucks? Yeah, five bucks for the first episode. Then you can buy the season pass of the remainder up ep- remaining remaining episodes. I think for twenty dollars, or is it fifteen? $15. No, fifteen. That's right, fourteen ninety nine. You'll save five bucks. Yeah. So. Buy five episodes, get one free. Or buy four, get one buy four, free. Get one free. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and you don't even need a loyalty card <laughs> to get that deal. Uh, there was uh, a little bit of an uh, announcement from uh, Telltale that says, We are very concerned about the long delay for this episode, but this is one of those occasions where several things conspired against us, not to mention the initial de- initial uh, or additional delays due to the holidays. I won't dive into the details, but it's been an unusual and specific set of circumstances, and we do not anticipate it happening again as we go forward with the rest of the season. Um, Actually, here, so it looks like it launched in October, and um, uh, finally followed up by a couple other uh, consoles and so forth, iOS and all in December. And uh, if if you haven't tried this thing, if you're a fan of Walking Dead, definitely give this one uh, a try because uh, it, it's a pretty cool storyline. Uh, at least when you start playing it, when you hear about it initially, you're kind of like, "What? You know, story? Uh, you know, fables? Uh, story just characters? It's it. kind of weird. Just stick just play it. it. I mean, <laughs> by the end of it's, the, by the end of that first episode, you'll be like, "All right, give me the season pass." Absolutely. <laughs> You'll just you'll just go back to the main screen, 
before you go to the dash, and you just go, bye. Well, it, by the end of it, you're going to be going, ah, what? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> but I, I have a... Um, Actually, I, you'll want to punch your TV I, or monitor. I, I, I have, a, the, I have a theory, Rob. Yeah. And I think I'm going to pull a... I might be pulling a Brun right now. Don't pull a Brun. I'm going to call it... I'm going to call it... Um, the... Uh, the wolf is the is the, is the killer. I'm calling it. Your main character is the killer. No. Yep. I don't, well, yep. Maybe. I don't I'm know. Calling it. I, I see where you're going with this. I thought of this the other day. I don't know why this game just popped in my mind, and I was thinking about it, you know, and I'm like, you know what? The last person that was with the two people. That were murdered in the first episode was you. <laughs> At least that we're aware of. Right. You know. So, I mean, obviously it may not be, but I'm just like, wouldn't that be a kicker if at we play this game all the way through and we find out at the end that we're the actual murderer? <laughs> we're the serial killer. Yeah. We're trying to catch ourselves. Whoa. <laughs> how do you how do you think of that? How about I just that? blow your mind. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. So, it's, anyways. It's definitely something to consider. Well, but what it's, I liked is that the game made, it made me think. I was like, hmm. I mean, I'm thinking about the game and the story. And that's a I'm couple weeks playing. after you played. I was like played. in the middle of doing something else. I wasn't even in, I wasn't on the console. I was, you know, doing chores or something. All of a sudden I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I'm playing as the killer. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. So, I'm curious. Well, we'll see. Well, we'll at this see. rate, well, in about three years, when the last the last episode comes out, we'll we'll, uh, we'll discuss it. We'll yeah. see if I pulled a brun. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So moving on. Um, Xbox Music got an update this week. Um, if you are an Android um, mobile device user. You can, and if they, so, ugh, wow. If you have an Android mobile device and you use the Android Xbox Music app, there was a recent update that allows you to play your music in offline mode. So you can download and store your playlists on your Android device and then play them back when you're offline. You do not need to be connected to, uh, to the mobile internet or Wi-Fi. That's nice. Um, also included in the update, you get faster access to your music from the moment the app is opened. Just tap on the corner art for an artist song or an album to immediately start playing music. So you're never without the music the second you want to jam. Uh, you can also play your entire collection without picking a specific band, album, or genre. Uh, if you're not sure what you want to just what you want to listen to, just play your play your entire collection on shuffle to hear your favorites one after another. So uh, they done a lot of work to enhance Xbox music on mobile devices. Uh, they've also had recent updates to the Windows Phone and iOS experiences um, as well. And uh, they recently uh, offered offline mode for playback and fast playback on, on the iOS as well. And in December they did that for Windows Phone 8. So if, you, you know, if you're looking for a mobile player um, or you know, if you are a, um, an Xbox Music subscriber, uh, you might want to check this out as they've got uh, their app available across all three major platforms there. So, Hey, Mark, have you looked in the chat lately? Is he in there? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yep. Yeah, how about that? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. I know that person. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No. All right, so we uh gonna carry on, my friend. Let's carry on, yes. Let's carry on. Okay, so um, this one is what excited everybody this week. Oh yeah, oh absolutely. Uh, Microsoft released that there's gonna be a limited edition Xbox One Titanfall wireless controller. Uh, we all know that the new Xbox One controller is a pretty sweet. It 
just is a fantastic, fantastic controller. Well, you can have it even one up slightly more by getting the Titanfall limited edition controller. This thing, when I look at it, it, it just looks really nice, especially compared to just the standard black one. And somehow it makes me think of Battlestar Galactica and hockey. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the Chicago uh, uh, team color kind of thing with the Blackhawks. But anyway, the uh, controller is a limited edition uh, controller, so uh, t they haven't really released how many they're going to be making, but definitely if you're interested in this thing, you might want to snap it up right away. And I thought I heard on the Major Nelson podcast that it was going to be something like 60 some dollars for each I one of these. Yeah, I think you're right. $60, like 60 65 yeah. So um, it's definitely not cheap, but uh, hey, you get what you pay for. You can definitely have some uh, some cool uh, gaming enjoyment with you your can, controller, hopefully while you're playing Titanfall. You can order it through Amazon for sixty four ninety nine. Oh, there you go. Using our link. <laughs> so That's right. If you order this, order it through Amazon using our associate link. Yes. Right. And that even gives you more bragging rights. Exactly. I bought this cool controller and I supported the show. Yeah. Uh, Titanfall is going to be out on March 11th, 2014 in North America and March 13th in Europe. So, uh, yeah, check it out if you haven't seen it. Alrighty. So, we talked, at, what, last week that the MLB 2K was gone? They're no longer going to make it, and then, bam, here we go. New baseball game to take its place, and that's RBI Baseball. Do you do you remember playing this game, Rob, way back no, in the day? No, no. Huh? No, I don't. You, oh, you did? This is like, was real popular, but this is a, this, this has been gone. This game has been basically absent for two decades, so for 20 years. It, it was formerly a long-running game, um... And this is actually going to be RBI Baseball 14 uh, is going to be the title of it coming out this year. And uh, this is being developed by Major League Baseball's Advanced Media. Uh, this is the Major League Baseball's in-house interactive entertainment division. So this game's coming straight from uh, baseball. And it will launch on all current and next-gen consoles in addition to smartphones and tablets. But to just give you a little history, RBI Baseball 95 was a Time Warner Interactive developed game for the Sega 32X. Uh, that was the last entry in the series, uh, which began on the NES and the Famicom. So, I mean, the Sega 32. <laughs> wow, yeah. That is that tells you when. I mean, that's a long gap between then and now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But, uh, wow, that's really going back in the way back is. machine. Yes. So, way back. So, we'll see. Uh, this thing is, I don't think they gave a release date yet, but we expect it to be out probably, um, let's see, did they actually, no, they didn't have a date. Or to use that famous it, term, it's, it's out when it's It'll be out. coming out this spring. So, we should have it here next couple of months. Okay. So. I'll keep you updated on that, or we, we will keep you updated on that as uh, we get more information and hopefully some screenshots and videos of what's coming. Okay. Uh, this week, Battlefield 4 got patched on Xbox One to address a whole slew of different things. Not only did they fix bugs, but they kind of tweaked uh, a couple, two, three things um, just, uh, I guess, to help out the fairness of things. Uh, this was something that came out on Xbox One this week, and uh, similar patches were done across all of the other uh, relevant systems, PS3, PC, etc., etc. Uh, a couple of the things, I, I'm not going to go through the whole list over here, but a couple of the things uh, that they did was uh, they improved stability, uh, they fixed uh, random deadlocks, uh, which is, uh, I guess, the sound loop crash. Uh, fix some uh, player spawning issues, uh, camera glitches. Um, I guess some more bugs. Ah, I'm not going to go through the list. If you're really interested, uh, definitely check this out. Oh, and uh, they increased damage by 25% for the stealth jet 20 millimeter cannons. How about that? Cool. 
All right. All right. But yeah, Such check out the full list if you're interested. Or if you play much, much wanted uh, patch, I know that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Diablo 3. Rob, did you play this on the 360? No, I did not. Oh, I played I played the snot out of this game, dude. Yeah, but yeah. Um, it may be coming to Xbox One. There's been uh, uh, listings that have been spotted on two major retailers. Uh, one was Best Buy of Canada, and the other was a UK outlet called Argos. They listed this game for the Xbox One. And uh, Blizzard isn't confirming it, but they're not denying it either. Um, so the, the only thing that they've said was, one of our goals is to bring Diablo 3 to as many players as possible. Uh, that was a statement they gave to Eurogamer. But they have said, but we don't have any other platform announcements to share at this time. So we, we know it's coming to the PS4. And uh, so, I mean, I would not expect this, that it wouldn't come to the Xbox One as well either. And my big question is, as much as I played this, am I going to go through it again? I mean, I played this thing like four times through, like in a week or two week time span. So I'm now I'm like, oh boy, if this comes out, am I going to want to do that again or play it again on the the Xbox One? Because it was such a fantastic game. But uh, I, I I do hope it makes it to the Xbox One. Excellent. Oh game. yeah. Absolutely. So we'll keep you updated. Okay. Uh, we got some uh, NPD numbers uh, for December. They finally got released the other day. And uh, I heard on... Uh, did, you, did you listen to Major Nelson's podcast no, from last not. week? They actually talked about NPD briefly, and they said what it actually stands for. And I was really surprised by it, and I can't remember what it is now. Do you know what it is? Um, not off the top of my head, but I guess... It was some some weird thing yeah <laughs> see if you can find it while i'm going through this uh short list over here just because we talk about the npd numbers all the time and uh <laughs> I, nobody really wanted to know what it meant anyway uh so the numbers uh for december uh 2013 came out and uh hey mark while it, well sorry to interrupt you while you're doing that but guess which console was the number one selling next gen console in december Atari 2600? Yes, you are absolutely wrong. <laughs> oh, no, of course, it's the Xbox One. So the Xbox One was uh, the best-selling console in the United States uh, for December. And also, the Xbox 360 was the best-selling co selling console uh, in the old gen. Or would this be... So this would be third gen, second gen, maybe. Okay, whatever. And... Uh, so uh, best-selling best titles uh, for December, which was December 1st through January 4th, uh, in order are Call of Duty Ghosts, uh, Battlefield 4, uh, Just Dance, number 4 is Madden NFL 25, number 5 <laughs> is uh, NBA 2K14, number 6, Assassin's Creed 4, uh, 7 was Grand Theft Auto 5, number 8 was Lego... Marvel Superheroes. And number nine was FIFA 14. And number 10, Skylanders Swap Force. I guess uh, Disney Infinity did not make it in that list. <laughs> and let me see if I can get the numbers for the actual consoles. While you're looking at that, NPD stands for National Purchase Diary. Yeah, that's it. Isn't that a weird one? It is. It's Yeah, that was surprising. Anyway, uh, 360 sales were 600,000 from what I remember. And, oh, here it, here it is. So uh, 360 consoles, the number is 643,000, which is a respectable number for the, so. old, for the old system. And the Xbox One came in at 908,000. Cool. So, yeah, those are good numbers. Absolutely, absolutely. And just for, what, 13, 14 markets? Something like that for Xbox One? They did very well. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to see what happens when it gets out into bigger mar or a, big, a broader market range. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, you know, these numbers are just for the U.S., aren't they? So the they hopefully... Are, yes. Yeah, so hopefully they sold even more. Oh, yeah. Although they're probably not tracked as well as this. 
So uh, that's the numbers for this show. Back to you, my friend. All righty. So we've got uh, Hitman. If you played the recent Hitman game, uh, Absolution, IO Interactive has wrote an open letter to Hitman fans detailing the direction for the Agent 47 game that the studio is working on. Now, this is what gets me. It says, doing everything next to apologize for Hitman Absolution, the studio said the next game will go back to Agent 47 at the prime of his career with the support of his handler, Diana Burnwood, and the shadow organization she works for. Uh, apologizing for the game? I thought, I mean, this game was fantastic. I loved it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't play the previous ones, but I thought this game was fantastic. So I'm like, I don't know what they're apologizing for. But um, they, they've quoted here saying, We've adopted an open, non-linear level design approach to the game, ensuring the game will play out across huge, checkpoint-free sandbox levels. The IO letter notes, Our aim is to create living, breathing, and believable levels, which will allow gamers to play around with the AI to create those unique moments every fan of the Hitman franchise loves. Um, Absolution's clever contact contracts mode will return, which allows players to challenge friends to different level scenarios. But 80, Agent 47's Mary Poppins-like bottomless magic pockets featuring an entire arsenal won't. The studio plans to share more uh, further into 2014. So, I don't know. Hmm. that. Um, actually, I really liked Hitman Absolution, so I'm a little concerned with what they're going to do with it, but you know, we'll we'll see what happens, and we'll keep reporting as uh, we hear more. Absolutely. Now, one thing that is kind of a, a strange story that that hit the uh, news sites uh, this past week was that Ubisoft, of all people, announced that they're going to be publishing a next gen version of Tetris um, <laughs> on Xbox Live and and, and other places. This is some, this is a game that's going to be turning 30 years old uh, this year. It came out such a long time ago. Um, man, what was that company? Mindscape or something like that that first published it, at least in the U.S. Uh, they brought it out, and it's had so many different uh, iterations. The one that I remember the most is on the Game Boy, the yeah. original Game Boy. That was the game that like everybody played. Yeah, and then. You know, as soon as uh, phones could do that kind of stuff, it graduated over to phones and mobile devices and so forth. So they're going to do something with this game, I guess, to bring it back. Pro I'm guessing probably as a 30th anniversary edition, and I don't know what they could really do this to this uh, do to this game to really make it interesting. I would think that they'd have to really spice it up or something like that. Maybe they'll probably put some in-app purchases or something like that. <laughs> Who knows? Great. To uh, yeah, to to monetize it or what? Who knows? But uh, yeah, look for uh, a next gen version of Tetris hitting the Xbox One. With uh, you know, it'll probably be using all of those little shaders and all that memory bandwidth, and it'll look amazing. <laughs> absolutely, next those squares blocks. will be amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, I chuckle when I saw this, but oh well. Yeah. We'll see. If it's not yeah. $50, like stupid oh, yeah. Angry Birds, <laughs> uh, you know, if it's like a $5 title, I'll probably pick it up. But I think I think for Tetris, if they want more than $5, I'm not buying it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've, we've all played this a million times, so. Yeah, it, it's got to be innovative or, or something. It's Granted, it's one of those, uh, what do they call them, casual games that a lot of people really love. So if they can do something with it to, let's say, give it the appeal of Peggle, that would probably be pretty cool. Yeah. But they, they'd really have to do something innovative to make it interesting. So we'll see. All right. So Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. This game uh, was uh, scheduled. This was coming out in February. It has been delayed, but it's only been delayed by a week. Um, Electronic Arts says that the game will now launch on February 25th in North America and on February 27th in Europe. So it's only a uh, one week delay and this is going to be a $40 game. 
So I don't think wow. we've, we haven't discussed that price before. No, I no. I don't know if I've seen that price listed before, but this article finally lists the price. So I don't know, 40 bucks. I, I do hope that mm. they put a demo out, and that's kind of one thing that kind of uh, is not uh, what I'm no, what I don't like about the Xbox One is that they do not require demos anymore. And I think us going into yeah. the world of digital downloads, I think demos should be required. I love that the Xbox 360 did that. Um, I, I do see that there are some demos coming out, but I don't know why they didn't just keep with that program because forty dollars. Um, now I'm going to have to rely on, you know, people who buy it. Reviews. Or the reviews that <laughs> yeah. we don't always agree with. I'd rather get my hands on it and play it myself. So, I don't know. 40 bucks is a little steep. That's a lot more than I expected that game to be. So, that's kind of disappointing. Yep. But, yeah, right. that's an interesting price point. We've had games, of course, for the $60 price range, and there was something that was 50-ish, right? Yeah, we now forgot seen what it was. Yeah. 50. We got uh, the stupid Angry Birds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 50. That's true. It's a it's a it's a $1 game on the on the iPhone and it's $50 on Xbox One. <laughs> Come on. It's just, I wonder how many people really bought that. I would have bought the game if it wasn't yeah. $50. I mean, if that thing was down, even if it was $20, I probably would have picked it up. You really? Know? But I'm not paying more than twenty dollars for an Angry Birds game. No way. So. You know what would have been cool if if they uh, let's say if on the screen you had your little slingshot with your bird, and then you could use the connect to kind of just like grab it and pull it. You know what I'm talking about? For fifty dollars, they better have that ability in there. <laughs> <laughs> Just where you can use your hand to like slingshot it or to shoot it, but anyway, all right, ready to move on, my friend. You Let's done? Move on. Okay. Uh, Microsoft uh, had an exec uh, by the name of Blair Westlink, West Blair Westlake, and uh, if if you listened carefully, you heard that I said had. That's because uh, Blair had resigned from Microsoft. Uh, Blair was in charge of licensing of TV, movies, and music for uh, you know, all the various uh, services. And uh, Blair had given, uh, I guess, a statements to Variety. It says, It has become clear to me that the organization is moving in a direction th that does not fit either my expertise or my skill sets. And I think what he's talking about here is that uh, there's been some huge I don't want to call them shakeups uh, at Microsoft but there's been a lot of changes like a lot of people in the Windows division are kind of history they're gone and uh, uh, various other areas and uh, Steve Ballmer of course I'm sure everybody knows he's set to uh, leave as soon as they find a replacement for him and, and so forth I, I can only see that as being a good thing yeah. Although I did hear that he was the one that was actually responsible for the Xbox because he actually gave it the green light. So, of all things, at least we have him or we have uh, that to thank him for. But anyway, uh, He's just he goes an on. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, over the last few months, Microsoft has been undergoing a large-scale reorganization. During that period, I have had the privilege of working with numerous talented and professional people. While I miss their company, while I will m miss their company uh, and our interaction, I truly believe that this move is in the best interest of all parties concerned. I want to thank my talented and committed team, as well as Yusuf Mehdi, Robbie Bach, Will Poole, and Hank Vigil. Uh, all of whom had had a significant and positive impact on me in my tenure at Microsoft. So this guy's been around for almost 10 years. He started in August of 2004, and uh, he uh, essentially uh, has resigned. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens uh, with his replacement and maybe if things will change at all uh, in terms of Xbox One, because Xbox One has all that TV content and stuff uh, going for it. 
So, yeah, we'll see. All Back right. to you, my friend. All right. So, Fable Trilogy, the Xbox 360 is getting some more love, and the Fable Trilogy is coming your way. Uh, this package is going to include the Fable Anniversary, Fable 2, and Fable 3. This trilogy bundle will be available in the Xbox Marketplace is is real and in development. Uh, the bundle will include the full 360 titles for all three of those games that I mentioned. And uh, they'll be um, giving us official details regarding the release soon. Um, the bundle has, has a release date of February 4th on the Xbox Marketplace, though Microsoft has not confirmed a launch plans. plans. Fable Anniversary, the HD remake of Fable, is due out on the 4th as well. And um, so we'll see. Maybe maybe that bundle is uh, going to make its way there. So if you haven't played any of the Fable games, that's uh, I think it's kind of cool you can get all three. And, uh, I mean, I never played the original because it was on the original Xbox. So I've played Fable 2 and Fable 3. I'm kind of not sure if I want to do the Fable Anniversary Edition or not, but uh, um, we'll see what happens. We'll see how that goes. But, uh, yeah, this is, I think this is kind of cool news. Bringing a bundle, it'll probably be a very good price, would be would be my guess. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So. All right, moving on to Star Wars territory. Uh, a game that was initially announced about a year and a half ago was Star Wars 1313. This had a lot of people really excited. There's a little bit of mystery as to what the game was initially, but we kind of found out that it had to do with uh, uh, the players being cast as uh, bounty hunters, uh, kind of going around and doing b- bounty hunterish kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't know if it would basically be kind of like a GTA type of thing or not. But anyway, well, th- there's been some... Um, I guess the future of the game's kind of been in up in the air especially after Disney uh, purchased uh, uh, the whole uniform. What would, you, what would you call that? The whole franchise? The Star yeah. Wars franchise? Yeah, franchise. let's call it franchise, yeah. So Disney purchased them, and uh, I guess some things don't fit quite into the Disney vision of cutesy, nicey kind of stuff, and Star Wars 1313 is one of those things. Uh, they've yeah, kind of... So good. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are, I'm sure, really disappointed at this, you know, along with Mark. Uh, The game kind of got put out into limbo, um, from what I remember, when that purchase happened. And uh, it was announced uh, earlier last week, or midweek, that the patent uh, for, or the trademark for... Uh, this whole thing had lapsed, and I guess the the trademark status is listed as abandoned because no statement of use or extension requirement timely filed. Wait, timely filed uh, after notice of allowance was issued? Huh? What? Okay, that's some kind of legalese. To <laughs> it got abandoned. In other words, Disney doesn't care about it. So yeah, it doesn't look yeah. like it's going to see the light of day. <laughs> yeah. So the code and everything for the game is probably up on some cloud-based server to never be seen again. Maybe they'll uh, be able to sell it off to some company and maybe uh, retheme it or whatever you want to call it. It's uh, probably hidden about 1,300 levels below the surface of Coruscant. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Absolutely. So uh, rest in peace, Star Wars 1313. Hard, hardly we knew ye. That's true. All right. Well, Rob, do you got any other topics to discuss? No, I don't think so. That's I already good, talked about I my don't headphones. Have any images prepared. Okay. So, <laughs> so if you uh, wish That's to, right. oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at what I did there. Um, if you wish to be a part of the community, you can uh, follow us on Facebook. Just look for this Xbox Life. You can e- email us any questions at contact at thisxboxlife.com. You can follow us on Twitter. Um, I don't, Rob, you don't follow the Twitter account, do you? Uh, I do every once in a while. I, I don't okay. go in there regularly. Yeah, I don't anymore. Um, yeah. the, the Twitter app was um, causing me some grief, so I actually uninstalled it and life oh, no. without it. So 
I don't follow it, so we do use it to post stuff. So uh, please don't reach out directly to us using the Twitter app. Um, hit us on Facebook or via email. Um, F and just a reminder that the Facebook group is closed, so uh, only people that are members of the group. Can well, see it's open, posts. but it's closed. It's not closed. Closed. It's closed. <laughs> yeah, it closed but it's not group. closed. Closed. You have like to be approved gone. by us to join, and yes. your posts are only visible to those that are in the group. So, just a, a reminder. Yeah, right, and Rob. if you're if you're from one of those countries where. Um, you just create a uh, a Facebook profile and put two pictures on it, and it was created last week. Please stop trying to join. Our group. <laughs> we get so many of those every day. Now. Oh my gosh! Was- you know, at at first it was kind of interesting because I would look through the pictures on them just to see. Oh, look! And you're absolutely right with how <laughs> what you told me about those things. It's <laughs> a picture of, of one same. type and a every picture of another of type, yep. and they're all cookie cutter. But you know, this you could past tell. you could tell just by the uh, the invite. You don't have to go in to to look at the person yeah. anymore. I've gotten pretty good at it. <laughs> oh, absolutely! You're absolutely right. And because we talked about this a couple weeks ago, and this past week I started getting mad. <laughs> Every time I would I would just ignore one of those things. I'd be like, "Oh, stop that!" <laughs> but. Anywho. That's the pop. That's the price that comes with fame, buddy. Oh yeah. So all right, why don't they're, we talk? They're the equivalent of paparazzis for us, maybe. I don't know. Take us into our our new games this week, Rob. All right. So this is another week where it's pretty darn light uh, for our dear consoles. I don't believe there's anything for the 360 for Xbox One. We have the Dead Rising 3 DLC that we talked about earlier this week, and. Uh, I think uh, we might have a little bit more next week to talk about, but that's it for this week. So if you like the Dead Rising 3, which I know a lot of people do, big fans of it, uh, it's going to be a good week. So you got something new and fresh. I imagine you're probably getting getting this, aren't you, Mark? Yeah. Yes. (laughs) I've already got the season pass. Do you want to think about that for a little while? Nope. No? Okay. I'm good. (laughs) Okay. that, That was a very quick, yeah. Yep. But uh, totally understood. So, all right. So that's about it. So be sure to any purchases you make, please uh, support our, us by making your purchases at Amazon.com, by doing going to thisxboxlife.com forward slash Amazon and bookmarking that page, or you can go to thisxboxlife.com and click on the Amazon link. And now that I've just thought of that, I thought of something, Rob. Did you not update our our website recently? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I did. In direct uh, response to a listener? Yeah, it, it's still kind of in beta, but uh, it, it should be usable, and we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, what we've got now on the website is uh, new and improved. You can now watch uh, our Twitch. Mm, what would you call it? Not feed. But yeah, anyway, you can watch our, our on live or on live online or did you look? I forgot. I'm to watching look. it right now. I can see. Oh, it. fantastic! So if you want to watch uh, our, our recording on Sunday nights, uh, they happen at uh, 9 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, please adjust for whatever time zone you're in. And uh, if you want to watch the live recording, you can now go to our website. Uh, you can click on. Oh, what, what did I name that tab? It wasn't you know, a tab. It was right at the top. Yeah. There's, there's two places. You can just click on there, just look at it, and uh, it actually was, not. Uh, oh, you named this. it TXL on Twitch. That's that big top. banner, right? No, well, that's the that's the tab at the yeah, top. Yeah, TXL on Twitch, right. And then right underneath our main images, uh, before the latest story, it says TXL is recorded live on Twitch.tv. Join us Sundays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And then there's a big watch button, which will take you to the same place. And then there's a status over there that you added a status above the Amazon page. And it says right now, streaming live. So it shows our status. So Excellent. So, yeah, you don't need to search uh, for us on the Twitch website anymore. Just go to thisxboxlife.com and watch it there. Um, And I might change that around uh, a little bit 
uh, in it's the kinda, next week or two. It's kind of ugly. Yeah. Especially the status. But yeah. It looks all crammed together, it, but I know it. It is what it is. <laughs> but at least we got it out there finally. So absolutely. Um, so uh, yeah, I expect that to change a little bit, but uh, hopefully maintain the same functionality. I just need to find what works best for our site, what looks cleanest, and what people like the best. All right. So, yeah, that is that. And if you miss the live Twitch feed, you can always watch us on our YouTube channel. We we do upload these to our YouTube channel. So. And, of um, course, and also, as always, the podcast. I did. Yeah, there's the audio still. So, yeah. But also, um, there was a lot of Titanfall... Uh, videos. I actually had a member of our community send me who got into the alpha oh, and was yeah. playing it this weekend, and he sent me a bunch of videos. I didn't put them in our show today simply because YouTube is rip, uh, deleting all these videos. So if I had it in the podcast, there was a good chance they'd delete this episode. <laughs> so oh, absolutely. we didn't want that to happen. So I, I didn't put any of the Titanfall videos in. But uh, if you look around, you can see there's still stuff out there. Um, you can see some people playing it. And uh, all I can say is, from what is being told to me by some members of the community who have played it, it, it lives up to the hype. It is fantastic. So I'm excited for this game. And I oh, think me we too. All should be. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you signed it up for it too, right? Didn't you? I did, but I didn't get in, though. No. Yeah. yeah, me neither. Bummer. So, but, oh, well. All righty. Guess we'll just have to wait two months. I guess so. Well, actually, not even. Six weeks. <laughs> ish something like that something like that so all right that's it uh rate us uh, if you listen to us on itunes please rate us five stars and um uh, thank you guys for listening and supporting us i am mark ak wingman 709 taking off i'm rob also known as presar on xbox live thanks for listening and watching everybody we'll catch you all next week